Hi everyone, it's Lou Collins and let's get on with another Distress Ink and Oxide colour combination video and this week we're going to be looking at Scattered Straw. So this is a pale yellow, it's absolutely beautiful, um, it's going to work really well for things like New Baby, um, Harvest Fall, uh, Thanksgiving, do you know what, it's going to cover so many different occasions. I've got two colour combinations ready for you which you can see sneak peeks of there but I'll go through the exact colours that I'm using and you can see how they blend. But let's first of all swatch this uh, scattered straw and see what it looks like. Now I tend to use oxides for these but um, you can definitely do very very similar with inks if that's your preference. So first of all scattered straw let's pop it on some white cardstock. If you've not already seen the distress colour combination um, playlist that I have on my channel you can go and check that out. We are working through each of the Distress Oxide and Ink colours alphabetically so we're obviously down to the S's now. There's something like 50, 51 videos up already out of 70 so um, yeah we're a good way through. I will be completing the entire alphabet, all of the colours for you and then I'll be moving on to a second um, ink blending series which I'm really excited to start so please make sure you subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss out on that. So that is Scattered Straw. The blending brushes um, and the blending mat and of course the printable chart is all linked down below. Just scroll through the links and you'll find all of those. So it's very, very creamy. It's kind of a buttermilk, slightly warmer than that colour. Let's have a look and see what it looks like against other yellows in the range. So this is the colour chart that I was just discussing. This is a free download for you. You'll need to fill it in at home. Um, and that way you can see which colours you've already got and which ones you need at a glance. Uh, really handy to just have some in your hanging in your craft studio, your craft room, wherever it may be, um, and just check out what works with what really nicely and easily. So as we can see, scattered straw is just down here. Um, it kind of looks a little bit like it's got a bit of a peachy tone there, a little bit of an orangey tone, but it's definitely on the yellow side. Just below it there, if I bring this up, is fossilised amber. So you'll see that is not too dissimilar, but definitely darker. And above it, wild honey is much darker, much more into the oranges there. There aren't actually that many yellows within the distress range. I think uh, I would say wild honey is getting more towards an orange. So you've only really got scattered straw, fossilised amber. Squeezed lemonade is much, much brighter. And mustard seed is a, again, it's a brighter, bolder yellow. So squeaky lemonade is paler. And then we're into the greens. So really there's not a lot to compare it with. But if you want to try out any of these combinations and you don't have scattered straw already, um, have a go with squeezed lemonade or fossilised amber. So now for the first colour combination. Now I'm going to keep this tonal in that we're going to go from light to dark through this beautiful yellow colour. I have gone for Wild Honey and I've gone for Rusty Hinge as well. Huge fan of Rusty Hinge. I love that colour. Now Rusty Hinge does have its own video already that I've created so you can go and see what that looks like on its own and colour combinations with it too. But already you can see the three together look beautiful. So let's actually blend them. So let's go into Wild Honey next. Now I've been talking, so my scattered straw has likely uh, soaked in and dried, um, but we'll see whether we need to apply any more to get this nice blend. Oh, do you know what? That's really, really close. Little bit of scattered straw over here just to help with that blend line, and that is not far off at all. Look how easily those two have gone into each other. Isn't that just fabulous? I love that. Now I've got a little patch here, which I'm thinking I did pick this up earlier. Okay, I'll be honest, I was eating a bag of crisps and I had greasy fingers and I picked up the paper strips and I did think earlier that might affect my blending later. And I think I've got a little tiny bit of grease there. So make sure you don't do that. Now let's just wipe this mat because we're going to go into Rusty Hinge on the end here and see how well that blends in then to Wild Honey. So I don't want to have any of the yellow going into this. Now this is absolutely gorgeous. Fabulous sort of ginger colour. Really lovely. There we go. Look, that has just already, again, worked so beautifully without any 
hard work, any hard blending into that wild honey. What beautiful three colours together. Let's just touch that where I've just touched it with my fingers, which by the way are now grease free. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? So, so pretty. I really love that blend. I think I'm definitely going to be creating a card with these colours very, very soon. Something I love to do when I do a three colour ombre like this, or even a four colour, is take that darkest colour and then do like stamp a background with it or part of a background, maybe a large floral over it in the base colour, the darkest colour, um, and that just works absolutely beautifully. So definitely try that out. Now, should we do another colour combination? with the scattered straw this time we're going to be doing uh, four colors instead so again i'm going to start with a scattered straw on the end here and just do this around about a quarter of the way up i love the um the creative craft products blending brushes so the brushes that um, i'm using you're going to find linked down below as i said from craft stash but you're also going to find the labels that I use. Now, just lately, because I'm in between studios, I'm actually storing all my brushes in a tub, which is not very good because of the uh, actual ink and the brushes are catching on the handles of others, making them really messy. So they're all going to need a really good clean up uh, before I get to put them back displayed on my wall in their own places again in the new studio when it's ready. But needless to say, I've got labels on them all and the labels are also another free download for you on my blog that you'll find linked down below. They come in both colour which provides labels for the ink pads and they also come in black too. So the next colour I'm going to be going into is a bundled sage. So a lovely pale green which I thought would work really nicely into the yellow. Now I actually saw a tip the other day for washing, cleaning your uh, Distress Ink and Oxide brushes and I really want to try it out so I can let you know how it all works but in case anyone else has tried it, leave me a note in the comments and that's putting them all inside a, pen, uh, a pillowcase, I was going to say pencil case then, a pillowcase and then putting them into the washing machine. I'm presuming on quite a cool wash but like I say I really want to try that out and see if that works. Now I've gone on into bundled sage there. Next I'm going to go into evergreen bow. It's taken me a few months, but I've learned how to say that properly now. So again, this is I don't think this is too dissimilar from uh, bundled sage. Slightly more of a blue tone. Again, bundled sage, evergreen bow, they all have their very own videos. So you can go and check those out on that playlist. I'm going to link that at the end for you so you can click straight into the playlist and find all of your favorite colors there certainly the ones i've done at least so there's uh, evergreen bow now you see the patchiness um you might notice that at different lights and that's because some of the dye within the ink hasn't quite soaked into the paper and dried yet once it does you're left with this beautiful creamy pigment left on top of the paper which is absolutely beautiful. So um, don't stress too much about your blending until it's dried um, and you can see the finished piece because very often it looks 10 times better once it's dried. And lastly, I'm going into Rustic Wilderness. So this is a deep, deep green, more of a grass green. This one's actually quite a juicy ink pad, so I'm going to be careful not to overpower the evergreen bow and because it's so dark I'm just going to do the very end here and I'm actually going to come back and do my blending with the evergreen bow just to ensure that like I say I don't overpower the that color because it can happen if you've got a stronger color and you're blending up into the previous color you can really lose what I'd call the the weaker color of the two but look at that just Pop some evergreen bow over the top. Look, that took seconds. There we go. So, like I say, the playlist for all the previous colours is just here. You can find that there. But there's those two colour combinations using scattered straw. Absolutely beautiful. One warm, one cooler. And if you do like these videos, please don't forget, of course, to hit the subscribe button for my channel so you can see more of them and be notified. Take care.